good morning everyone uh, welcome to today's uh, session I do hope that you can all hear me um, this is the first webinar that we're doing with the JC investment challenge and, and specifically for um, the teachers that are involved the supervising teachers uh, my name is Ralph Spears I have uh, recently joined the investment challenge team so today what what we wanted to do is really to try and answer questions that you might have as to you know things that you're not understanding or you would like to 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 listen to or or just explain more so um, I did ha uh, prepare a few slides but um, I really wanted to rather do as many question and answers as possible I'm going to quickly run through a few slides um, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page um, and so I would like you to if you've got questions I would like you to start typing in the top right hand side and so that as I go through the presentation I can then start addressing some of the questions you have so please if you don't mind on the top right hand corner if you can just type in your questions um, and then I'll be able to start helping you along the way because I really would like this to be really more of a Q&A than instead of me just talking um, about things that you might have already known and therefore not, I really would like to get to what you wanting to know so if you can type in these questions I will see them along the way and I'll be able to answer them in the meantime I'm going to start with the presentation until questions start coming up um, so if we had to go through this investment challenge overview you understand you get given a million rand uh, virtual funds per the team you have got four in a team and it starts on Monday the 9th of March and it ends on the 25th of September there are monthly and annual prizes and it costs 120 rand please note you do have 30 days to pay the 120 rand and please make sure that you do send through the proof of payment uh, of the 120 and obviously telling us which teams are this for we really need to know which teams um, have paid and then we will manually um, make sure that they will not be suspended after 30 days should your team have not paid and we have not received proof of payment uh, what will happen is when they try and log in it will say uh, you're suspended and you need to contact us uh, and only once we've received the proof of payment will we unsuspend the team and they can continue playing the game um, there are three different games as, as most of you have indicated uh, a majority is either equity game or speculator um, I would say if you're going to ever register teams in future and they've never played the game before uh, you might want to focus on the income game um, those who are experienced would go for the speculator um, you know it all depends on on your team's experience and knowledge of the market so I'm going to go through the income game quickly just to to summarize it the teams are required to protect the, their capital value um, on an inflation basis um, so basically uh, what will happen is you, there's a target that they have to reach to kind of beat inflation which is for the annual gain is 30,000 Rand um, and the monthly um, portfolio it's 5,000 Rand so their portfolios must be above that in order for them to qualify to to start actually um, being in a position to win and obviously the team with the highest income will then actually uh, win the competition um, the starting portfolio is 70,000 in cash and 300,000 in shares so on Monday you will find that the scoreboards will be reset and on Monday you'll find that they'll have shares already bought for them they can choose to sell them on Monday if they would like uh, otherwise they can hold them if they hold them and there are the other teams that have got the same shares obviously they're all going to be moving in the same direction so they might want to select some of the shares that they think might not be performing well and actually get rid of them on the first day if they choose it's really up to them the portfolio only may hold the top 40 companies and uh, there's no derivatives warrants or options that you can actually uh, own so it's only the top 40 companies there is a list on the website that you can get the portfolio must 
hold a minimum of 400 in cash at all times. Okay, um, so that's the income game. I'm going to quickly go through the, specula the equity and speculator and then I'll get to some of the questions I see already coming through. The teams are required to increase the capital growth in their portfolio. So basically the team with the highest return or the, the biggest portfolio value at the end of the competition wins it and as well as for the monthly. You get 500,000 in equity and 500,000 in cash when you start. Uh, no more than 10% may be held in any one share. Um, this is an important point because um, when you purchase, you, you, you cannot purchase more than 10%. If the share goes above 10% from the moment it starts uh, um, you know, moving, uh, like for example the following day, if it goes to 11 or 12%, there's no problem. But when you started and you purchased the share, you can't buy more than 10% at the start. No warrants derivatives or options may be held and you need a minimum of cash of 250,000 at all times. And then speculator, very similar to equity, the only difference is your portfolio starts with a, a million rand cash at the start. On Monday you'll be holding no shares and you need to start selecting shares. No more than 10% can be held in any one share. Uh, teams may invest in any JSC listed share including warrants. So. Uh, there's 391 companies listed on the JSE currently. You can buy any of the 391, plus in this game, you, they can trade warrants. I'm now going to just summarize it. There you can see the summary of the three different games. What I'd like to do is now just quickly go to some of your questions already so that we can see uh, what I can help you with. Um, Hi, when I register, there's a question, uh, when I register my team and click all three portfolios, is that a problem? There is no problem if you register uh, your team for all three portfolios. If you choose, uh, if a team can afford to, it's 120 Rand a game, if they can afford all three games uh, and to pay 120 per game, then they're welcome to register um, for all three games. So, so teams can play more than one game at a time and there will be a click down menu in their portfolio where they can then uh, play any of those, uh, the, any of the three games. As long as they've paid 120 for each game, there's no problem. Remembering this is 120 per team, not individual. A team, um, so then the next question is, um, in past, people uh, struggle to understand the website. Is it more user-friendly this year? I believe it is more friendly uh, this year. It is a new platform that we're using, and 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 so hopefully you're not going to have uh, any problems. I can actually take you to the website right now, and um, this is what it looks like now. Uh, I've already uh, logged in. Um, this is the portfolio very simple um, to use uh, the scoreboard where I think that's where everyone will want to go every day and you can see here if I'm playing more than one game if I'm in the income game I can go see my score myself on the income game if I am in the spec if I'm playing the equity game I can go see myself in the equity game and if I've got I'm also registered for the speculator I can also look at the um, I can also look at that scoreboard. So you can look at all three scoreboards um, and that's what you can do there. What is the best way to generate income through the sale of shares or through dividends and interest? It's a very important question as far as the income game. For those um, schools that are playing the income game, uh, there's two ways to generate income and that is through dividends and through interest. Yes, so basically every day you will find that you will earn interest on your cash balance. The bigger your cash balance, obviously the more interest you're earning every day on that cash balance. So that's one way of generating income. The other way is through dividends. If, for example, uh, you buy dividend companies, um, as long as you're holding it on the last date of trading, on a Friday it is paid out on the close and on Monday you will receive 
that dividend in your account. So you are then welcome to sell it on Monday, but you need to be, the, the team needs to be holding that dividend, that company that's going to pay out dividend on the Friday, on the last day of trading. How do they have that on the last day of trading? It means that they have, would have needed to have bought it the day before, which would have been Thursday. So here's a timeline that I've got here for you. On the last, uh, on Thursday before 5 o'clock, the trade should have been placed. On Friday, you must not sell it. And on Monday, you're welcome to sell it um, or keep on holding it. It's really up to you. So it's important you can't buy it on Friday and you can't sell it on Friday. You need to be owning it before Friday. Uh, those are the only two ways you can earn income is from dividends and from interest. You do not earn income from selling a share. That is capital growth and you need to then get 30,000 Rand uh, uh, to basically qualify under income, uh, under the, the, the growth. So for example, I'm going to show you the scoreboard on the income game. If you look here, if you look here, I'm not sure if you can see the exact amount, but it's 30,000 here. As long as they're above 30,000, they then qualify to, to obviously compete, and the team with the highest income then will win this competition. Currently, that um, Nolly one is having 10,000 Rand, and she's above 31, so she's in position 1. Position 2 is only got 3,000 Rand, but they're also above 32. Everyone else below is below 30,000, and therefore, you know, they can't compete against the other teams. The first objective is to try and beat inflation of 30,000 Rand per annum, and thereafter, the team with the highest income from either dividend-paying companies or from interest wins this competition. I think I've explained it enough there as far as income goes. Um, may a team register after Monday? Yes, a team is welcome to register after Monday. However, we are trying to encourage everyone to be registered by Monday. Um, the last date for, for those to qualify for the annual competition is the end of March. Should somebody have not registered by the end of March, if you register after March, your team will not qualify to, to, to be able to win, should they come first, be able to win the annual competition because they did not play for the six-month duration. Okay, I'm just reading the next question. But another question is, how can we correct the portfolio chosen? Um, so if you would like to play income game but you've selected, for example, speculator or, or equity, just need to write an email to schoolc at jc.co.za, that's schoolc at jc.co.za, and you just state the team name, and you say, please could we change it from income to speculator. Uh, I, I do believe that kind of change would probably need to take place before the competition starts. Um, it could be a problem once the game starts, so do send it in if you're needing to change which portfolio your teams are involved in to school C at jsc.ca.za. You're welcome to, to receive the slides. It's a question afterwards. Uh, you're welcome to receive the slides that we've got over here. Uh, I can send that through to you. You can just um, email school C at jsc and, and we'll forward you the, the slides I'm doing right now. Um, so if you want to send the payment slip, um, there's a question about sending the payment slip. All you do is scan it through and send it to schoolc at jc.co.za with the team name um, and we'll be able to then make sure that they um, have been allocated uh, and will not be suspended. So there's a question, could you briefly cover the growth portfolio and how it's calculated? So if we look at the growth portfolio, uh, this is an example, but let's maybe take it to the live, to the live account right now. If I had to go to the growth portfolio, I click on, I click on portfolio, and under growth. So basically, the growth portfolio is all about um, your company's 
um, going up in price and the team with the highest that generated the most amount of money from the overall move is a team that will be in position number one. In this case you can see this portfolio is made 39,000 Rand and that these are the different companies. Um, I can quickly run through the, the, the columns. First column is the instrument name, second is the quantity of shares, third column is the cost including the brokerage fee that you paid, the next one is the previous day's close, that's yesterday's close in value and the current value that you have. The today's move, it's either gone up or day, uh, down, it is a 15 minute delay. This is quite a nice improvement from last year. You are able to see currently what's happening to the share right now, 15 minutes delayed. Whereas in the past it was only showing the closing price, this year it's showing you the move as in live data, just 15 minutes delayed. The overall move in percentage form and value and how much do you hold according to your portfolio, what percentage. Should you want to sell this, should you want to sell this right now, you can go and click on trade and you can click the sell button. So if I clicked on trade and then I type in how much I want to sell, well roughly I've got 250. If I wanted to sell 250, I could push the sell button and now I'm selling my Anglo shares that I actually own if I confirm this order. And let's go and confirm the order. I push confirm and what will happen is the order is now confirmed and it's placed. But now I want to go look and let's say I've made a mistake. I feel um, I shouldn't have sold them because they have now started to rally and the price has increased. I can go and cancel them under pending sales. I can push cancel and immediately it's now cancelled and it's still within my portfolio. So Anglo is still there. I, I haven't sold it. You must remember when you place an order, it is only uh, concluded overnight and tomorrow it will disappear from your account. It stays there right up until early hours of tomorrow morning before it is then deleted or executed depending on what you did if you bought or sold. Just want to go back to some questions here. Um, um, the question was last year the teams traded and only showed the following day. This year will it be the same? That is correct. We don't show it live. We don't show it immediately. And there's a reason behind that because then the, the learners will sit in front of the computer the whole day trading because they are able to see their trades executed uh, continuously during the day like the live market and then we'll have learners that are not focused on their studies and more focused on the game. So we try to have everything end of day so just to make sure that you know people aren't glued to the to the screens all day and are in and out the market. We want to make this fair for everyone. Obviously this is a game that we would like people not to just necessarily focus on all day but they can place their trade and leave it knowing that it will be executed at the end of the day and they'll see it tomorrow in their portfolio. So there's a question, you said income, um, income game are only increased in two ways, interest and the balance, um, uh, interest, uh, interest on the balance, that's correct, on cash and dividends. So we need to contain a big balance while also trying to keep buying and selling shares. That's a good way of looking at it, yes. Um, Interest is important because every day, every day you're in the market, so if we look at this income game right now, every day that you are, every day that you are sitting in shares, you are obviously missing out on interest, so on that cash balance, or on that balance, so you've got to balance it by going into the market, making a profit, and then making sure that you also are sitting um, in cash when you can, but you've got to balance the two. Um, when you buy dividend companies, you lose a lot of money because they go ex-div. In other words, on the Monday they start falling and roughly by the same price they paid out. And so therefore, that deletes your, your capital growth of which you have to work on again. So you kind of got to balance the two 
um, to make sure your growth is up and at the same time trying to get income at the same time. I hope I've answered you, but yeah, you're on the right track when you say make sure you, you, you kind of uh, balance it and, and keep an eye out on this interest. Um, who makes the sales? Because all the learners and the teachers was registers. Please explain, is everyone seen the same when entering and playing? Um, so everyone, uh, oh, sorry, you meant everyone in the team. Yeah, so anyone in the team or teach, well, uh, 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 the teachers can help. If they don't have access to the internet, the teachers can help, help sell their shares. But a teammate, only one teammate in a team needs to push the sell button on a trade. Not all of them have to go and push sell. So only one person can go sell and you will then see that, you will see actually who sold that. Um, so you only need really one person to be executing the buy or sell. I mean, they can take turns, um, but it's really up to them who, who actually goes and sells that share. So to confirm again, uh, equity and speculated gain, it's only 10% uh, max that you can buy in any company. I hope that answers it. Um, Actually, if I'm right, um, he's trying to mean learners open an account, teacher guides or so far, teacher guides also can buy. Yeah, so I would prefer that the learners are purchasing, uh, they should be purchasing. I don't think actually the teachers should be per purchasing. The learners should be purchasing, the, uh, doing the purchases. And if, for example, that the, the, the learners don't have access to the internet, the teacher can go and use their username and password I'm talking about there being um, uh, the, the learner's username and password and enter into their account and place the trade on their behalf so long as you got permission to do so. Um, you will see in the back of the manuals there is a page where it says um, the buy and sell. We always encourage learners if they don't have access to the internet to actually go and fill in that form. It's on the, uh, one of the last pages of, of the manual. Uh, and they, they then can just um, use that form to fill it in. I would prefer if you don't fax it to the JSC, but you actually rather do it if you have internet access yourself to actually place the, the trades for them, but using their username and password. The reason behind that is that if you fax it to us, we might be delayed in executing it, and then obviously if today closes and they could have got it at a better price, they, your team is missing out. It would be far better if you were able just to place it on their behalf should they not have a internet access. Okay, I'm going to go to another question. Um, okay, can, can we email questions in future to School C as we go along the game? You're welcome uh, to email School C at jc.zz. Uh, there's a team of us, um, Jenny uh, and Desiree and myself, Ralph that will answer your questions. You don't need to address it to Ralph because if you do, and I'm not in the office, you might get a delayed response where if you allowed it just to go to school, C at JSC, one of the team um, leaders here will be able to reply immediately to you and you should get the answer in the same day. So, you know, uh, be careful of just addressing it to me because I might be out traveling, doing programs and will not be able to answer it until I get back. Um, so rather just use the word school C at jsc.c.za. So we're starting on Monday. It's basically on Monday, 9 a.m., the competition starts. You will notice that on Monday, the scoreboards, the scoreboards will be all 0, 0, 0, the actual growths. All the scoreboards will change back to 0. Uh, everyone will be back to square 1 and uh, we will be ready to go. Just remember this is a new platform. If you've got any problems um, you might be experiencing, please let us know. School C at JSC and we'll be able to try and fix it. We, we have seen one or two things we've needed to change. So, you know, there might be something that you might pick up that we can try and improve. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for um, coming to listen to to us um, and uh, you know it's been great to have you at this first session I do wish you all the best 
uh, mentoring your teams. Uh, I think um, the key to trying to make it exciting as possible, meet your teams at least once or twice a month, um, maybe once a week if you can, uh, show them their portfolios, show them where they, what position they are, and try and guide them as to, you know, what to look out for, uh, bring them newspapers, if you can, find charts on the companies, and that way you can make it exciting, you know, you, they shouldn't be some thucking to try and say, okay, the, buy the share, it shouldn't be a, um, just a guess, you should try and give them some kind of information that would help them to be on the right side of the market and actually uh, choosing the right shares and, and um, doing well in this competition. And that's where you can try and give them as much information as possible. Uh, for example, uh, what I like to do with, my, uh, with classes when I've held, dealt with uh, schools in the past, I actually encourage them to go in weekly to um, plot the prices from the newspapers of these, these shares that they're owning to see what direction the share is taking and then they'll be able to monitor it and see are they holding on to a losing share by continuously going down or are they holding on to a winner by continuously going up. So using charts and actually physically getting them to do it as a team themselves is a nice way of getting them involved. And of course you're welcome to do your own internal competition amongst the school. We are able to, for example, uh, show you the scoreboard specifically of your teams um, and that way uh, they can see how well they're doing and um, you could have your own internal monthly competition where you have a little prize if you choose to do so. It's really up to you. Thank you so much from my side, Ralph. If you've uh, got any further queries, welcome to email us, schools at schoolc at jsc.ca.za. Um, and uh, we look forward to, to hearing uh, positive results from this game. Take care.